Paying rent isn't throwing away money. Is renting really a waste of money? It really depends on a person's situation. Consider this when renting. You can easily move if presented with a better job in another city, state. If there's a change that makes the neighborhood undesirable, you can easily relocate. If property taxes or insurance rise, yes renters pay property taxes, it's just priced into their rent, raising the rent rates, they can easily move to someplace more affordable. You can more easily move up to better properties, neighborhoods as your situation improves. You have no maintenance or landscaping to worry about. You can better control your costs if you are paying off bills or saving for your first house. Often, renting can allow one to live in a neighborhood they would not be able to afford to buy in. No. It depends on the situation. The problem is, people have a simplified view, due to the media. The media has falsely told them that property prices always rise, and renting is just dead money. That would be true, if property only went up, rents were expensive relative to mortgages and mortgages didn't have addition costs like insurance and interest payments. The issue is this. Both have costs, renting and buying. Both have advantages and disadvantages. However, with a mortgage there are also many indirect costs like opportunity cost, and time. Let me give you one small example, which few people think about. I personally know countless people who don't accept pay rises due to loving their house or whatever. A $5,000 after tax pay rise may not seem much, but if you reinvest that money into markets, that is over $1 million in 30 years, if markets perform as they have done historically. That is a huge opportunity cost and renters have less costs in numerous areas than landlords. The key thing is rental yields. Take the home value and divide it by the renting value. If you look at this 100% analytically and 0% with emotion, any objective analysis shows that in some situations, buying is cheaper, and in some situations renting is cheaper. Right now, however, most academic studies show renting is cheaper more than buying. A recent academic study showed buying is cheaper in 33% of American cities and more expensive in 65% plus of places. So the key points are doing the sums, maths and using property as a home, and not an investment. And if you must do it as an investment, focus on yields and leverage and not capital values. If you're basing the argument on the lost equity that builds over time, are you forgetting that you are renting the money you used to buy the house? Interest, mortgage interest, is the rent you pay each month for the money you are using. Look at an amortization table for a 30-year note. If you have a $200,000 mortgage at 4.5% you will pay $1,013.37 per month, principal and interest and after a year your balance will have only gone down to $196,773.55, $3,226.45 of the $12,160.44 going to principal ergo equity. Yes, a buyer does get benefits not seen by renters if the market values go up, However, if the market goes down like it did in 2009, a renter loses nothing as they have no equity exposure whereas the owner could be underwater, owning more than the house is currently worth. Should you like to make the argument that the interest is a tax deduction, then maybe you haven't actually looked at the math. In the above example you would have paid $8,933.99 in interest. However, this amount is not enough to allow you to itemize as it's covered in the basic deduction, so where are the savings? Even if the interest were high enough to itemize, by the time you distill the tax savings down to a cost, benefit, most people are spending thousands to save a few hundred in taxes. So don't be hard on renters and don't assume that home ownership is the only smart thing. At the end of the day, 
it really depends on each individual's situation and how best to address it. Do you agree that paying rent is a waste of money? Absolutely not. When one pays rent they are exchanging dollars for a place to live or some other purpose. Value for value. Thousands of very bright and capable business people pay rent each month for a space to do business because it makes sense to do so. I pay rent for a shared office space to operate my property management business because it makes sense. For my monthly expense I get a mailbox in a zip code that is very prestigious. A conference room when I need it and a business center and shared secretary. I use it to run a business renting homes to other people. Renting makes good economic sense for some purposes. Do you agree that paying rent is a waste money? Yes and no. It depends on the situation. If you buy a house or condo, then your monthly payments build equity, so the money goes somewhere that benefits you. For many people this is what they prefer, since it's part of their planning for the future. But there are also many situations where living in an apartment is the best solution for someone. In an apartment building, or in some rental houses, you don't have to spend your own time doing repairs or maintenance chores. The landlord pays for a plumber if one is needed, takes care of the grounds, and handles all other repairs. If you're a busy person, or value your time highly, not having to take time out to mow the lawn or to find someone who can take care of household repairs can be well worth renting rather than owning. I've also known elderly people who had owned houses and raised families in them, but had reached a point where they wanted to spend their time enjoying their life and have moved into apartments where friends lived nearby. They were able to spend their time and efforts on enjoying their lives rather than on upkeep. Sometimes people are in transitional times in life and don't want to buy a house then sell it in a year if there's a good chance they'll be moving to another job or have a good chance of getting a promotion. Maybe they've been transferred to a new job in a new city and are likely to be moving again, soon. Or they want time to settle in and get to know the city and not have to deal with the responsibilities of home ownership for a while. I have a friend who is turning 70 soon. She's got a good pension and savings, plus social security. She not at a point where she's planning for retirement, since she has it taken care of. She'd much rather rent, as she's doing, than deal with home ownership. It's true that if you're paying rent, you aren't building equity. You don't get any tax benefit over it, but you do gain more personal time and don't have to spend money on upkeep and repairs. There are a number of reasons for wanting to buy a home over renting and most are valid. Some people want to buy because their current rental unit may have restrictions on owning a pet, while home ownership would, in most cases, not have this limitation. Others want to diversify their assets beyond the stock market. Still others may be pressured by friends and family, loved ones may claim you are simply throwing your money away if you rent, but with owning, you could be building equity every month. Is this really true? You are building equity as a homeowner but it is true that you are building equity each month as a homeowner. However, the amount of equity you're building is equivalent to the portion of your monthly mortgage payment that goes toward paying down principal. Because most mortgages are structured to have a uniform monthly payment for the life of the loan, in practice, this means that your early payments will consist of more interest than principal. So while you are paying down principal and building equity, you may not be building as much as you imagined. For example, let's say you had a 30-year fixed rate mortgage with an interest rate of 4% and a starting loan balance of $500,000. Your monthly payment would be $2,387 but just 30% of this payment or $720 would go toward building equity during the first month. Over the first five years, less than 35% of your total mortgage payments go toward paying down principal, that is about $48,000 out of $143,000 of total payments. Scott Trench, Director of Operations at Real Estate Investment Social Network Bigger Pockets. Added, yes, 
Equity can make you feel good, but it's not really money you can use freely until you've sold the property. And if you end up selling in a down market, you may not end up realizing as much equity as you expected. You're still throwing money down the drain as a homeowner. While you are building some equity when owning a home, your monthly housing costs consist of much more than just principal payments on your mortgage. In fact, you could say that mortgage interest, taxes, homeowners insurance, homeowners association fees, and ongoing maintenance costs are all wasted money that you throw down the toilet as a homeowner. People often say that buying a home was the best investment they ever made, said Neela Humble, chief planning officer at financial planning firm Abacus Wealth Partners. The problem is that their return as investors is often worse than they think. When calculating how much they made on a home, most people do not include the out-of-pocket costs they incurred through things like replacing pipes, repairing roofs, or numerous other unexpected expenses that come up. As a tenant, your costs are fixed, but as a homeowner, you are on the hook for any repair that comes up. Those needed repairs to your home may involve you doing a lot of research online to find a solution or simply paying a repairman to remedy the issue. Either way, you're on the hook for investing more time and money into your home when something breaks. The transaction costs are large for buying. The costs of buying and selling real estate are significant, and those costs don't go toward building equity either. Buying a house entails many transaction costs that add up to 3, 4, or 5 percent of the price of the home and sometimes even more, said David Rice a professor who teaches residential real estate at Brooklyn Law School. Many advise that home buyers should have at least a five-year time horizon or they risk having those transaction costs eat into any gains they were hoping to get out of the sale of their home. Even worse, those costs can lead to a loss, if the local market is soft. On a $500,000 home purchase, 3 to 5% of closing costs translates to $15,000 to $25,000, not an immaterial amount of money. When you ultimately sell your home, you may have to pay another 3 to 5% in closing costs or more. That's why your expected time horizon in a home is one of the most important factors to consider when deciding whether it is the right time for you to buy. A longer time horizon gives your home a better opportunity to realize sufficient price appreciation, to offset those larger transaction costs. Leonard Steinberg, president of real estate brokerage Compass, added, Buying involves commitment and generally, commitment has shown over many centuries to deliver great rewards. It makes sense to buy if you want to commit to a home and location for the long term. Anyone seeking short-term rewards is better off renting. Are you telling me I should rent? At the end of the day, there are a lot of benefits to owning a home. Especially if you are planning to be in the same place for at least five years, buying a home could provide you with both personal and financial benefits. On the personal side, buying a home will allow you to put roots down and customize a home to your preferences. You'll also be able to save on moving costs for as long as you stay. On the financial side, mortgage interest and property taxes paid could help reduce your tax bill if you itemize deductions on your federal tax return. In addition, if you're using the home as your primary residence, you may be able to exclude as much as $500,000 of capital gains from federal income taxes. In certain circumstances, it may make sense for you to rent over buy. It really depends largely on your time horizon, financial situation, future plans, and economics of your local area. Whatever route you choose, just remember to take into account all relevant factors necessary to come to a thoughtful decision. And next time your Uncle Biff tells you you're simply throwing away money by renting, you can hit him with some knowledge. Better investments. When you pay a reasonable rent, you're opening up the possibility of investing in something other than the potentially volatile or stagnant housing market. 
consider that compared to the below 0% average gain on housing investments between 1975 and 2009, the stock market averaged 3.375% yearly returns, after taxes and inflation. Now that sounds like a better investment. Getting starting with investing in the stock market isn't hard, either. All you need is a little introduction and a chat with a good financial advisor to see what your options are. Investing is a great way to support and profit from the growth of your favorite companies and even to play a part in how these firms change the world. Some other great uses for the extra money you're saving by paying rent are investing in yourself by getting an education and increasing your earning potential. Or, you can invest in your own business with the intention of growing it. If you have a side gig already, then investing in your pet project can turn it from a side job into a real career. The point is, no matter what your granddad or sister or friend tells you, renting a home isn't a waste of money, and buying a home isn't a great investment. Of course, you can absolutely buy a house but you should make sure to put your money into genuine investments that will make you some real profit. It's time to abolish the notion that home ownership is the only way to go. Share this article with a friend who could use a new outlook on investing.